the first point or the first step is to understand who the beast is. You know, I, I find it very interesting. I find it very interesting that a lot of discussion is taking place about the mark of the beast. And no one, almost no one is asking who is the beast. In terms of the discussion, I hear about vaccine. I heard about a chip in your hand. But who is the beast? That should have been the first logical question to ask. And that's the first one. Now, this question, trying to answer, answer this question, will take us through a long history of Bible prophecy. And it takes me about, it takes me a couple of weeks to teach this lesson to, to my students. So to do it in one night um, is a challenge, but I'll, I'll, I'll do enough to get you to understand. All right? So understanding who the beast is will take us through a review of Bible prophecy, especially the prophecy of Daniel and the chapter 13 of Revelation. Because the beast of Revelation 13 is understood to be pulling on the language of Daniel chapter 7. And so we need to go to Daniel chapter 7 and even some of Daniel chapter 2 to look at the kingdom. So I'm going to go to the screen now. And on the screen, you'll see a summary of Daniel's chapter 2 and 7, but you'll also see the kingdoms and the dates that they rule. And so you see there that the head of gold, the head of gold represents Babylon in Daniel chapter 2, as well as in Daniel chapter 7, the lion represents the same kingdom. Then you have the beer and the chest and arms of silver representing Medo-Persia, who ruled from 539 to 331 BC. Then the ties of brass and the leopard with four wings and four heads represent the kingdom of Greece. And then the legs of iron and the fourth beast represents Rome. Rome. Hold it on the screen there a little, a little time there for me. Okay. Now, what we're seeing here is that when we get to Revelation 13, you're going to find that this beast is pulling on the language of Daniel chapter 7. Okay? Let's go to the um, next slide. And again, I'm sorry that I have to be summarizing because of the time factor and what I have to cover. But please take your Bibles to Revelation chapter 13 and read verses 1 to 3, and you can catch up, as well as Daniel chapter 7, verses 21 to 25. And that will give you a summary of the little horn and the, the beast of Revelation 13. What we're saying is that both entities, both icons, represent the same power. Okay? And this power is part of Rome. I'm, I'm going to touch on, on that a little more, but a different type of Rome, different phase of the Roman Empire. So both powers, Revelation 13 and, 7, and Daniel 7, came up out of the sea. Both the little horn and this beast of Revelation 13, um, they reflect, the, the, the beast of Revelation 13 is a composite of all the beasts of Daniel chapter 7. The, bee, the little horn of Daniel 7 speak great words against the Most High, and the beasts of Revelation 13 blasphemes the Most High, or speak blasphemous words. And then in Daniel chapter 7, the little horn reigns for a time, times, and a half a time, and the beast of Revelation 13 reigns for 42 months. And if you do the calculation, you're going to realize it's the same time, both the time, times, and a half a time, representing three and a half years. In Bible prophecy, it's the same amount of time as 42 months. I don't have time to explain that now, maybe another time, but just take my word for it as it is now and do some research. Same as 1260 years. All right? You can take off this, this, this screen now. So what we're saying is that this beast, of Revelation 
13 verses 1 and 2, well, well, for the entire chapter, is a continuation of the kingdoms or runs parallel with the little horn of Daniel chapter 7. You also see this, that the beast of Revelation 13 is, follows the dragon of Revelation 12. And in Bible prophecy, even though the dragon represents Satan, the dragon also represents Rome, who was trying to kill the man-child. And this beast power is going to take its authority from the dragon. According to Revelation 13, verses 1 and 2, I should think I should have it on the screen. The Bible says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So let me pause here to see what I'm, what I'm trying to say here. If you would interpret Bible prophecy using the historicist method, you can remove the screen. If you use the inter historicist method, as I discussed with you last evening, God presents the kingdoms of the world in sequence. Okay? So, for example, in Daniel chapter 7, you have Medo Persia following Babylon, Greece following Medo Persia, Rome following um, Greece. And then the Bible tells us that Rome itself will be broken up into several kingdoms and will have different phases of rulership. And Revelation 12 shows us that the beast power that we're talking about and concerned about follows the dragon because the dragon hands over power to the beast. Okay? It's just the same way in Daniel chapter 7 that the little horn comes out of the Roman Empire, the, that final beast. And also in Daniel chapter um, 2, the kingdom is divided into iron and clay. So right up front, this beast of Revelation 13 is identified as papal Rome, okay? That took over rulership of the world after pagan Rome fell, so to speak. Because what happened, the pagan Roman Empire was, was not conquered by another empire as such. It was divided up into different um, kingdoms, as, as mentioned, it has ten horns by the Germanic tribes that came from the, from the north. Rome was vandalized and was, and was divided up. But eventually, through a series of successive events, the bishop of Rome became so prominent that con AD and would rule the world for several years. What I'm saying here, the conclusion I'm making is a well-known fact of history. I'm not making this up. When you study the, 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 the conclusions, especially when you go back to Protestant America, the most prominent theologians in America from any denomination, from the, from the Baptists, the Methodists, the Anglicans, the Puritans, the Congregationalists, the Calvinists, they all conclude that the beast of Revelation chapter 13 represents the do your research and you'll see that this is the conclusion, starting from Martin Luther, um, coming right up. But you'll notice, as I said last evening, whenever God's people forsake this, the use of the historicist method in doing Bible prophecy, we go into apostasy and we end up into a problem and there's confusion about who the beast is and so on. So in, in history, there was no confusion about who the beast is. They knew, especially those those theologians and, and Christians who were fleeing from the persecuting power from Europe, coming to America, they knew exactly who the beast was. The only difference with their interpretation is that they, they did not see two beasts in Revelation 13. They saw one. And they are not very far off. I would not say that they are incorrect because we're, we're, we're going to come to that. So the first point to establish in trying to look at what the mark of the beast is, is to identify the beast. 
And we this evening, based upon Bible prophecy and based upon the historicist method, we are identifying papal Rome as the beast that inherited its power from the Roman Empire. Okay? 